if anyone is joining late, please help them out with the page number and the chapter name, Adolescent Nutrition and Growth with, with Girl Child in Focus, chapter 38, page 497. <clears throat> so, Adolescent Nutrition, the adolescent age it's considered as a period of rapid growth and it is kind of your last chance to grow as well okay initially the rapid growth takes place during your toddler age group okay infancy to toddlerhood okay and then to preschooler age there is a rapid uh, growth and development but the second chance that a <clears throat> human life will have to grow it's during the teenage years during the adolescent years Okay, so that is kind of the last chance to grow. It is a trans transitional phase in human life. You are transitioning from a child to an adult. Okay, so the adolescent age from 10 to 19 years of age is considered as a transitional stage in human life. <clears throat> hmm. There are a lot of care and counseling that are coming into limelight for adolescent. There is there is a lot of care and counseling coming for adolescents, teenagers in the recent years. <clears throat> a lot of uh, nutritional programs and all are also catering towards adolescent health and nutrition. So one of that program is AYA. It stands for Adolescent and Young Adults. Okay, you have another program called AGYA for Adolescent Girls and Young Adults. Okay, these are the abbreviations of AYA and AGYA. Next is precocious puberty, which means when signs of uh, development are seen in girls before the age of eight, before the, their eighth birthday, certain signs of puberty, okay, maybe the nipples have grown bigger and darker, okay, maybe there could be some facial hair, underarm hair, these things may be uh, seen. So these are the so, uh, some early signs of secondary sexual characteristics. Okay, it's usually about breast development. Okay, alveolar development around the nipples. Okay, that is seen in girls before the age of eight. Okay, before the age of eight, it's called as precocious puberty. Then you have delayed puberty, in which the same sexual secondary sexual characteristics are not seen in girls or boys even till the age of 13 and 14. 13 in girls and 14 in boys. Okay, that is called delayed puberty. By the age of 13, every normal healthy girl, uh, teenage girl should show signs of secondary sexual characteristics. Her breast development should be there. In boys, before by the age of 14, um, maturation in boys, okay, facial facial ha hair, rapid growth spurt, okay, these things should be seen in boys. So that is delayed puberty. If by the age of thirteen in girls and by the age of fourteen in boys, if the secondary sexual uh, characteristics are not visible, it's called as delayed puberty. And malnutrition is also very common among teenagers. Okay, because they consume very less amount of food because of the lack of time. They are usually engaged in a lot of studies in school and college as well. And many of them, they, don't, they will not carry tiffin boxes. And they will fo focus on junk food and soft drinks. And the, uh, and because these uh, these food, uh, they, these food don't have enough vitamins and minerals, junk food, they undergo malnutrition. Girls usually eat less food 
to remain slim, okay? And in some families, adolescent girls eat last and the least because of poverty and ignorance that still happens, okay? In poor families, they will tend to feed their boys more and not girls. So this could lead to certain eating disorders like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, etc. Then issue of pregnancy, teenage pregnancy, adolescent pregnancy. Uh, in rural areas, it is more common as girls are married very young. Okay, even before the body is completely mature enough to bear a child, they get pregnant. And that is a high-risk pregnancy. Teenage pregnancies are high-risk pregnancies. Coming to commonly seen eating behavior in uh, adolescents. Missing meals, like Usually they miss a lot of breakfast. Okay? They may be getting late for school, okay, or may to maintain their weight and all. They will skip eating breakfast. And if they are skipping breakfast, they will stay hungry and they can't uh, focus in their class. So the performance at school also dips. Then eating a lot of snacks and confectionaries. These usually just are empty calories and it leads to micronutrient deficiencies. Some adolescents will also skip lunches and dinner as well and they will only eat snacks, lays, chips, okay, something like that. Fast food and soft drinks, okay. Fast foods do not provide adequate uh, nutrition because it can only give calories but not vitamins or minerals. And also certain uh, uh, additives that we add in fast food like ajinomoto, coloring agents and dyes, these are anti-nutrients, okay? Even whatever nutrient is left in, any fa in, in the fast food, that also will not be absorbed because of the presence of these anti-nutrients. Then you have alcohol consumption. Soft drinks as well, they supply empty calories. They don't contain any nutrients. Okay, They just give you calories and sugar content. Alcohol consumption is also common in teenagers because they want to test it. Okay, Smoking and alcoholism, this is the age when they try to indulge it. Okay, so They want to uh, at least experience it. So sometimes it may lead to over abuse addictions as well. Some likes and dislikes for food they will they uh, they will not eat for some specific vegetables, some specific fruits or cereals. They will not eat steamed food they don't like. Okay, they only go for fried food. Okay, the uh, which for fast food etc. These kind of food. Uh, which has too much of trans fat and all. Okay, these are the common items they choose. Then variable food consumption. On some days, they tend to take high energy food and some days they will take low energy food. They don't have a routine. Okay, if they are skipping a lot of meals, they just eat whatever they can and it is not a routine. Low intake of nutrients, especially uh, iron, calcium, iodine, fluorine, okay? Other important vitamins like vitamin A, E, C, zinc, copper, selenium, okay? Zinc supplementation is also shown to improve your metabolism, your weight gain, height gain. And if you're dealing with malnutrition, zinc supplements should be taken. It boosts your immunity as well. Then unconventional meal, uh, some new age meals, 
okay like sort like sushis and all okay sushi is like raw fish okay uh, consuming sushi is not that common in india okay it is unconventional for people who are from the previous generations okay grandfathers and grandmothers they will detest it they will say you are not supposed to eat raw meat raw fish you should never eat it okay so that is an unconventional meal okay so there are there are so many unconventional meals which the uh, which you which the young youngsters have acquired from uh, western culture eastern culture okay because they they are exposed to a lot of international way of living so they they try to experiment these things okay so these things are considered as unconventional meals that will stress out the elders at home then diet dieting adolescent dieters especially among girls it seems more common to remain slim okay and some in boys they want to be tall and muscular this could lead to some disorders like anorexia nervosa bulimia acne deficiencies okay so these are the common eating behaviors seen in teenagers eat healthy campaign some eat healthy campaign uh, slogans have been mentioned one is moderation in all things to make sure that the at a teenager is having a healthy balanced diet which includes all food groups on a daily basis okay fat oil sugar should be minimum okay food triangle should be kept in mind while preparing the meal okay milk and milk products as well variety is the spice of life that is another slogan in which <clears throat> don't always give the same vegetable don't always cook the same pulse cereal okay Mo monotony should be avoided what is enough only uh, how much they require to satisfy or to fulfill the satiety that much they have to eat for example an adolescent boy should eat as much as the father okay and an adolescent girls should eat a little more than what the mother eats okay so that is what is considered enough for adolescent growth and development okay how much the father is able to eat that much the boy adolescent teenage boy should eat okay how much the mother is eating a little bit more than that a teenage girl should eat then about meat one man's meat is another man's poison okay so this is the debate between vegetarianism and non vegetarianism okay uh, in some studies it is seen that vegetarians are healthier uh, but it also depends what type of vegetarianism are you following if you are uh, vegetarians definitely have low risk of obesity coronary artery diseases hypertension colon cancers okay but vegans if you are on the spectrum of veganism in vegetarian diet who eat no animal products at all they are at the risk of developing calcium iron vitamin b12 deficiencies and vitamin d deficiency as well okay lacto uh, ovo vegetarians they have the very least amount of nutritional risk except for iron deficiency and fruitarians are the highest for a uh, risky diet okay those who depend only on fruits okay they have the highest risk of malnourishment then enough is as uh, is as good as peace which means uh, if you have if you don't overeat okay you uh, be, before you go into the stage of overeating when you know what you had is more than enough that is as good as a feast okay that is a perfect diet do not overeat anything then about micronutrients and antioxidants beta carotene vitamin a vitamin c folic acid iron iodine zinc okay these are essential they are micronutrients as well as they act as antioxidants 
weekly iron tablets for adolescent is important. Giving them vitamin C rich citrus fruits. Re-establishing any breakdown in eating behavior. Eating with the family. Encourage more of eating with the family. So these all comes under healthy eating campaign. And coming to adolescent growth, it all depends on your genetic, hormonal and nutritional factors. Okay, How the child will grow. The childhood food habits, emotional balance. Okay, these all account. These all will account for growth in adolescence. There is a sudden height and weight increase, and the body proportions will also change. Facial facial features will change. Body structure, the way how fat is deposited in girls and boys, that will change during adolescent. Development of sexual organs. Appearance of sex, sex, secondary sexual characteristics. Okay. Menarche in girls will happen, and that uh, that is a signal of the sexual maturation. Once the girl attains menarche, it means she is sexually mature. Okay, uh, she she will be capable of fertilizing her ovum. Okay, but it should not be. But she has the capacity to work at least five years into menarche. Only after that, pregnancy should take place okay, if, if it is an early pregnancy. Nocturnal emission in boys is kind of what we call as wet dream. Okay. In which without their own control, spontaneously their body goes into orgasms. Okay, and they may also ejaculate. Okay, young uh, young boys will ejaculate. Semen will come out of their penis. Okay, uh, during their sleep, and they go into a state of orgasm. So that is that. That's what called as wet dreams. Uh, it's medical terminology. Terminologies, nocturnal emission. Then. 15% of the adult height is gained during the teenage days. 25% days percent of your adult weight is gained during the teenage days. Okay. In, in boys, at least 20 to 37 centimeter increase in height is seen. In girls, 16 to 25 centimeter height uh, increase is seen. Whereas 20 kg increase in weight is seen in boys, 16 kg increase in weight is seen in girls on an average. In early puberty, girls are taller, but by late puberty, boys become taller. Legs will grow faster than the trunk. Hands and feet will grow at a faster rate. Shoulders will widen in boys, hips will widen in girls. Then causes of growth failure. What leads to failure in growth? That is also genetic, nutritional issues, some deficiencies, chronic illnesses, recurrent illnesses, some endocrine issues, hormonal issues like thyroid and all any autoimmune disorders, these things can cause growth failure. It's called constitutional delay. When there is a growth failure in teenagers, it's called constitutional delay. And pubertal growth, as I mentioned earlier, it starts earlier in girls. Okay, by the age of 10 and 11, girls will start showing secondary sexual maturity. Okay, boys will start showing their second uh, signs of secondary sexual maturity by the age of 13 and 14. But it's early in girls. And fat deposition in girls also around the hips, thighs, 
breast area okay that is seen breast development enlargement of breast areola nipples pubic hair will start developing and growing okay and it, it becomes thicker and curlier day by day growth of hair in armpits increase in height weight and widening of all hips it takes place immediately and menarche the girls will start menstruation and uh, growth in boys the body becomes more muscular facial hair will begin to spurt okay mustaches will appear voice become deep and it breaks hair growth in the armpit chest and groin region and onset of nocturnal emissions will also start for boys so there is a table that is used to uh, rate the sexual maturity in teenagers it's called tanner's sexual maturity rating smr scale okay it's given in your textbook as well there are five stages of sexual maturity depending on the age and how the pubic hair grows or in uh, and the sexual features grow secondary sexual features grow okay so in boys uh, by the age of um, 10 to 12 there is no growth in uh, pubic hair to, uh, by the age of 12 uh, in the second stage by the age of 12 to 14 sparse long slightly pigmented hair will start growing by the age of, of 14 to 16 it's a third stage uh, the hair becomes to be, become more darker pubic hair and it starts to curl. Penis also will uh, increase in size. It will become longer. Testis will also become longer. Okay. In the fourth stage, that is the age of 16 to 18, uh, the penis will resemble like an adult penis. Okay. Uh, and uh, also the pubic hair will be also like an adult pubic hair. Penis becomes larger, increases in size and breadth. And the testis also becomes darker. Scrotum becomes darker. The last stage is 18 to 20. By the age of 20, uh, the pubic hair will start distributing towards the thighs, groin area. Pe penis is of the adult size. Testis is also of the adult size by the age of 20. Okay, So by the age of 20, a boy sexually matures completely. Okay, when it is in girls, sexual maturity, uh, 10 to 12 years uh, of girls, breast and pubic hair is pre-adolescent, okay. Depends on their genetics as well, okay. This pre-adolescent stage can be seen in girls as young as 7 to 8 years also these days. By the age of uh, 12 to 14, Pubic hairs is also sp uh, very sparse, lightly pigmented, and it is straight. Okay. Breast and the papilla is elevated and it increases in size. You can see the difference in first stage and second stage. There is a slight increase in the nipple size as well. By the age of 14 to 16, pubic hair becomes darker and it begins to curl. That is the third stage. Breast and area is also en uh, enlarged. And in the fourth stage, 16 to 18 years of age, pubic hair is very curly, coarse, abundant, but it is less than the adult. Okay, that is 16 to 18. The breast development area, areola and papilla, they form the secondary mount. Okay, the secondary mount of the nipples are also formed. And the breast is more enlarged as well. And the fifth stage is uh, 18 to 20 years of age. It forms the pubic hair grows into a triangle form, adult feminine triangle where a form will take. Okay, it sp spreads to the uh, thighs and the groin region, pubic hair. Mature nipple will project. 
by the age of 20. Breast size will also increase. Contours, breast contours will also be more prominent. Okay, so this is the SMR rating scale, sexual maturity rating scale. Then there is a health part, okay, on page number 505, you will see the Ellis health path for adolescent children, also called as the EHPA chart, EHPA chart, that is the Ellis health part for adolescent. Okay, so this is given by Elizabeth, Elizabeth K.E., so that's my Ellis health, uh, health part, okay. So here, based on the height, weight, and BMI, okay, based on the height, weight, and BMI, on the x-axis, you see the height. On the y-axis, one side, it is the weight. The other side is the BMI, okay? So here you can see in health path, children while you are while you are putting their height, weight, and BMI on a on a graph, they should be between healthy children will be between this green line. Okay, this green line means they are having a healthy path. Okay, the adolescent child is growing as per their requirement. If it is, uh, if the if uh, if their markings height and weight, okay, if if it is on the red side, either of the red side, okay, the upper red side is obesity, the lower red side is uh, undernourishment, okay. So this is how you use the health path for adolescent. You have to remember, the child has to be in this green area. Okay, anywhere between this green area means the child is healthy. Then coming to the adolescent care and counseling. About the health path, you can just read on page number 505 very simple to use and also to demonstrate and counsel the parents can also understand where the child should be it can be used for both the sexes okay both girls and boys both same chart can be used BMI is also in the same chart, so you don't have to calculate the BMI separately. So normal growth, undernutrition, overweight, tendency to ob be obesity, that is the yellow, the yellow light uh, area that you uh, see is the overweight area. Okay, that is the tendency of obesity area. So that is the use of health part. Adolescent care and counseling. They need special care, support, and counseling. Okay, and it can be organized by health centers, hospitals, teenage clubs under NGOs. Okay. And and any residential area societies, associations, they can also take this uh, uh, initiative, adolescent friendly hospital initiative, AFHI. So it re reflects on the productivity of the future nation. Even the size of the health of future citizens also is taken care of during this counseling. According to UNICEF, it is recommended that 40, 48 kg and 145 centimeter is the ideal pre-pregnancy weight and height for girls. So girls have to reach this. At, uh, undernourished, malnourished girls should reach at least this. Otherwise, if the mother's weight is less than 45 kg and her height is, if it is less than 145 centimeter, it could be a high risk pregnancy. There is high risk of giving birth to a low birth weight baby. And also the other four points in the counseling is ensure that boys and girls have an optimum growth and development. They are eating a balanced diet, 
avoid dieting, missing meals, okay? Soft drinks, confectionery, snacking as should be avoided. At least 45 kg weight and 145 centimeter in height should be there in women who are trying to get pregnant. One iron tablet and one calcium tablet per week should be given to adolescent girls to prevent anemia. Avoid marrying of teenage girls and avoid pregnancy during teenage years. Avoid drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Any high risk pattern, if it is seen, it has to be reported and counseled immediately. Give them information about sexually transmitted infections, reproductive tract infections, immunization for uh, uh, teenagers, TT immunization, uh, the uh, cervical cancer immunization, so these can be given. Any peer pressures, sexuality related concerns, like if they are, uh, if they are under any LGBTQ category, do you do they have same sex feelings or not? This about their sexuality, emotional problems, teach, uh, school related problems. Okay, this has to be given care and counseling. Girl child in focus. Guys, girls, girl ch children should be considered as a special privileged child, okay? Because she is a prospective mother. Tomorrow she would be a mother, okay? She has a, a chance to be a mother. So her health, uh, uh, when a girl child's health is optimum during her teenage years, she will give birth to healthy children, future citizens of the country, okay? So the future health of the country is in hands of the girl children of today. Her health, her education, her status in society. Okay, these all are important factors. National Girl Day is also celebrated on January 24th. Okay, and uh, the slogan uh, under central government is Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. The theme was to uh, make sure that the sex ratio, okay, in girls is more, okay, it is increases. Girl child mortality is also more in India. 929 girls, 2000 boys, that is the sex ratio in India. That has to import. That has to improve. That's why we have the PNDT Act, which prevents the determination of sex during pregnancy to avoid female feticides. And also, the uh, uh, age of marriage of girl children is now proposed proposed to be twenty one. Okay, from eighteen. Now it is eighteen, but it is now uh, the government is under uh, pushing it further to twenty one. Because in the past, we have seen that girl, children and women were also subject to, subjected to multi-deprivation, not just food, but emotional, equal chance to work. If there were sexual abuses. There were a lot of deprivation in a girl's and women's life in uh, previous decades. Even today, it is still there. So she has to do more hard work. She has to do multiple tasks, multiple responsibilities has to be taken. And she will not be given equal pay as per her male counterparts. Okay. So that's about adolescent girl, adolescent nutrition with girl child in focus.